Hi there everybody, this is Liz with Whip Stitching Whimsy and today we're going to be doing some painting instead of some sewing. So let's break out those paint brushes, make sure you have your painting clothes on, and let's go. Gather your supplies for this painting. So for my first painting, I ended up doing a Star Wars inspired painting. So we'll go to a thrift store and then find a picture that you like. So first thing you'll have to do is remove your picture from the frame and take away any glass. Unfortunately, I realized that this was a photograph like taped into the picture instead of being a painting. So that was sad, but I had committed and I was inspired. So I decided to paint on it anyway. From here, start your sketches, gather some inspiration and then begin sketching onto your painting. Give yourself a little bit of point of view as to where you're going. I find that it helps that you use a brighter color. We're gonna be going over it with paint, so that's why I didn't mind using a bright orange pen. It's okay to start small. I really was nervous to start this project, so it's okay to work yourself into it if you have to and then build off of the painting as you go once you get a little bit more confident. It's important to take the size of your brush into consideration. I'm working on a really really small figure so a brush that has very very few brish bristles is preferred. But once you get started, you will need to be brave and just slather that paint on in layers to give yourself a clear canvas to work with. I found that just blocking my shapes out in white paint is the most helpful way to get started. Every now and again, you have to take breaks from those finer details and your little shapes and just take a step back and work on the background. So I'm painting the shape around my photograph as well to incorporate that into a painting in itself. Um, in retrospect, I realized I probably should have just taken my photograph out of the background the backdrop and painted them separately but i kind of ended up liking how they merged into each other later on but that bright red definitely did not scream the the theme i was going for for this picture Now while working on my TIE Fighter, I definitely found that layering was key. I'm very impatient when it comes to, play, to painting. I really just want to keep on moving to the next thing and I don't want to wait for my paint to dry. So it was really hard for me, but I have faith in you to do it. It's the best method. Sometimes you just need to let that paint dry so that you can go over and really get those colors in nice and crisp make your shadows stand out and you don't want your colors to become all muddy always clean your brush because that'll keep your shadows from getting muddy as well While working on this project, I distinctly had two different water cups. I had one for my light colors and one for my dark colors because 
I am horrible at changing my water cup, so that way I had two at my disposal. But don't be afraid to go in there and really make your shadows dark when you are working on your painting because you want to make it stand out and really enhance the work that you picked up. It's key with these pictures that you pick up from thrift stores to enhance or to add on to with your own work that you really moderate what you add. Um, less is more when it comes to the detail. As hard as it is to take a step back. This was my finished painting. I hope that you enjoy and it brings you inspiration. So I picked up two paintings when I visited the thrift store. So the second one is a Breath of the Wild Legend of Zelda inspired painting. I love that game. So shout out to all my other Legend of Zelda fans out there. It is a fabulous universe. Anyway, um, so I decided when we went to the thrift store that I was going to add just a little tiny details to this painting to incorporate the, the beauty of that landscape. I thought that it just captured it very well. So to get started, just like we did with the Star Wars inspired painting, pick your spots, trace your shapes out, and don't be afraid to just get in there and slather white paint on. It's hard, but it's like ripping off a band-aid. You just, you gotta do it. You're going to be painting on this other person's work, so get over it and do it. So just giving yourself a blank canvas to work on with your shapes is a very key aspect to getting started. I think that it just brings a nice crispness to it, so you're not muddying up your shape into the painting that is already there. So I'm just going to add a shrine on that left bank there and then up in the right sky I the electric dragon Farash from the game flying across the sky and on the right bank I decided to just add two little tiny silent princess flowers growing out of the bank. So once you have your shapes blocked out just go in there and start adding in your detail. Layering in your shadows, letting your layers dry between. Work on your transitional shades, that'll really make your shadows look smooth and flow into each other nicely. With my shrine, uh, to get the color of the lights bright, I just did a nice layer of orange and then went through and redetailed all of the rock in on top of that and then built over that. And I did the same kind of technique with the dragon where I layered all my colors in and let them dry before adding that glow. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed my paintings. They were a lot of fun to put together. Uh, this was a craft that I really wanted to do for a very long time. But I hope that it inspired you to go and make your own paintings, and I hope that you share your art. I love seeing it, and that's really the goal here, is just to inspire you to make your own. So, good luck with all your...